We went from overvalued to just plain old dumb. The markets are now buying stocks that were basically dying and on the way out. Is Blockbuster Video still around? Might want to pick up a couple shares of that while we're at it. It's nonsense. Now certainly there are people who are riding a wave, making profits. That's not a question. The issue is that we have enabled and invited dot-com 2000 level speculation into the markets and nothing is being acknowledged. Simply ignoring the problem makes it go away apparently. We shouldn't worry though, because rule number one is that stocks never drop. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the ridiculousness of the markets today. It went beyond, it went way beyond. Just in the last several weeks, we went into this new territory, it's dot-com level speculation. We were approaching that level. Statistically, in certain cases, we have actually exceeded that. But now because of how dumb this has become, we are in the same sort of territory world. When you look at all of the, you know, the GameStop and all these different companies that are being bought up that nobody has any idea about, they don't know what the heck they're doing. They're simply getting in, they're riding the wave. The stock is going up like absolute crazy. And it is just being supercharged by all of the high frequency traders. This never ends well. And I'm going to show you the statistics behind it. I'm going to show you real investment advice who has, has a really good point that they make here. And then I'll show you some other details right after that. Let's get into it right away. Trading in the stock market used to require a mastery of all sorts of Wall Street jargon. These days, all you need to be fluent in is emoji. If a post on a Reddit Wall Street message board contains icons of rocket ships pointing upward, you best pay attention. Some of Reddit's favorite rockets are soaring again on Monday, even though the benchmark equity gauges are weaker from mall-based retailers like GameStop and Express to telecom blast from the past like Black berry and nokia the art slash wall street bets forum is minting small fortunes for retail traders who get in and most importantly out of the favored names at the right time and this is the issue that we are seeing because it's sent up soaring and then sometimes there's a consolidation and then sometimes it goes even higher than that and in this group here it's a lot of people who are now catching up well what is this what is it? okay i'll get in i'll get in and then the thing falls to the absolute floor in many cases worse off than where it was before the buzz started to take place that's the concern here where are you buying in it's very difficult to tell the people who have been doing this in their entire careers find it difficult to tell where they are at in that particular stock so that's why you use these uh, different uh, metrics you could say well you know based on this and that it should be around here as long as the other conditions and politically and you know other things that are going on around the world are not affected by it we can kind of have a good idea but today it's just about rocket ship emojis it continues on in this article here out of Bloomberg. Stock investors are hunting for the next GameStop on Reddit and Twitter. AMC, Express, BlackBerry, Nokia are some of the firms that are rising due to their popularity on social media and internet forums. Not because of their earnings. Not because of their profits. Not because they have some new development coming down the line. But simply because there is speculation taking place. And this is what I had worried about. Not because of what's going on with Amazon. Amazon hiring people, Amazon expanding their business operations, Amazon seeing a lot of customers come in their way. That's one thing. Now, the justification of the current price, we can argue about that. But when you've got brands like BlackBerry, who I don't know anybody that has a BlackBerry today, and I, I really thought the business was done, and I'm being serious about that. Now, back in the day, this was the hottest thing. But what's happening? You don't hear of these companies. And the reason that they're getting bought up is not because suddenly they're they're back you know, in style. No, it's because the stock has been going up. So people have been chasing that momentum higher and higher and higher. Look, even the business themselves is wondering what's going on. That's when you know it's messed up, all right? For a generation raised on the idea that you can get almost anything you want online, it's only natural that the next hot investment is lurking on the internet waiting to be found. They're talking about the same thing, Wall Street bets, this forum, people are getting in there. And what's happening now? This is an issue that I talked about either in the last video or the one before. 
one of the strategies that people are using today to make money is to look at which stocks are being shorted the most buy those and the performance has been incredible now i'm not telling you anybody to do this i'm simply telling you what's happening in the markets today it's crazy after gme i started searching for the next potential squeeze there's no way to actually predict the squeeze but i will monitor wall street bets and finance twitter this is what people are doing they're going on to reddit to find the next hot tip now this could actually work and has been working on the way up, on the way down. I don't know what's going to occur if we use history as a guide and not just previous crashes, but of course, different stocks that get bought up like crazy hurts and all these things. It doesn't end well for people who are really unsure because they're not going to know what to do until somebody else who is more experienced is already selling out and makes that information public. That's the thing. You know when to buy up and pretty much any time. You just have to say any time. And certainly you look pretty smart at this point from 2009. But you are going into a whole different level that these people are unprepared for. Commodities are going crazy right now for different reasons. But this is one of them that's been going up for, and it's been basically a year now. Lumber buyers pay up or run out amid U.S. home building surge. CME lumber futures hit a record high. Physical prices following. Hand-to-mouth buying scene fueling more price volatility. This has been something that, along with all the other commodities, has been rising and increasing costs, creating inflationary uh, events within these different sectors. Looking at housing right now, actually costing more to build. The prices of the homes have been going up, obviously, with as a result. If somebody's doing renovations, same deal. So we're looking at this at a time in which a lot of people, they cannot afford uh, another increase anywhere in their expenses. I want to run through a few of these really quickly. It's something that I cover often. Just wanted to touch on them and give you some updates. This is the five-day CBOE total put call ratio remains complacent in January 2021. And you can just see what's been going on recently. Essentially, what this means is that everybody's buying, nobody's shorting. We knew that already, but it's continuing more and more. Now, you could have looked at what was going on at the beginning of 2020, and suddenly things were changing there. But right now, the it's clearly evident what everybody is doing, the direction that they're heading, in fact, is to be getting out of the idea that maybe the stock market could go down and certainly just buying it all up. Same situation here on the 25-day CBOE total put call ratio. This is just going on all over the place. Real estate prices right here, you're looking at the one-year price change percentage by metro area, November and October. November is the green, and you could look at all these different places have been rising, rising, rising. The inflation is insane when we see it in measured in different things you can measure it in the real estate measure it in the commodities measure in energy whatever you might want to look at and in general it's been rising quite high phoenix right now is at nearly this this right here for those who can't see that's about 14 percent 14 percent in real estate that is just unbelievable unbelievable and then you can go, you know, this right here is 10%, just to give you an idea. So when you look at all of these different places that have been rising this high, it gives you this impression that, you know, there's something going on here that is truly unnatural. And you compare that to what we're seeing with the inflation rate, and it's nothing of the sort. Nothing of the sort. They do not include the actual real inflation that's existent in your rent slash housing prices it's just not factored in if they did it wouldn't basically look like you know if this is the chart here this is the, this is like the rent that this is what they do the mortgage rates um, mortgages i should say the cost it just goes like this linear amount and instead what occurs is pretty much a parabolic rise that people cannot afford but the way they 
quote unquote, can't afford it when they can manage it, as they like to call it, is simply by reducing interest rates down to the floor. Now, if you give people a 0% mortgage rate, as we probably will see, it doesn't surprise me, the mortgage rates just keep declining, and they've been doing so for 40 years now at this point, it's only going to make matters worse in the end. Because, you know, if somebody's going to be carrying around a million dollar, two million dollar, who knows by then, a two million dollar mortgage, and it's not affordable. The amount of debt that they have, forget about the fact that there's interest on top of it, even if it's a small amount of interest. This is just unaffordable to people. What's going to happen in between the time they take on that mortgage and then 30 years later? A uh, hundred different things will happen to them in their lives, unfortunately, that will set them back, set them you know, back a few years. Maybe they're, they're saying, I, you know what? I need to go on a vacation. I need to renovate the house. I need to buy a new car. And these things, what they do is they take more debt. They take it out of the equity and they go back again years and years backwards. It's not a good thing. Anyway, that's a rant. But you can see regardless that the inflation rate that they tell us and what's actually happening, two very different things. Real investment advice is one that I consistently mention. It's a fantastic source of information, and I love the fact that they're so level-headed. This right here just shows you what they've been doing. I'll show you a couple of charts in just a second. But they always make the point of saying, look, we're in the market, but we're very cautious about it. We're watching out. And in this case here, this is what they're doing right now. While we remain optimistic about the markets currently, we are also taking precautionary steps to tighten up stops, add non-correlated assets, raise some cash, and look to hedge risk opportunistically. Just because it isn't raining right now doesn't mean it won't. Nobody has ever gotten hurt by keeping an umbrella handy. And isn't that the way it is? In real life, in actual life, if you think there might be rain, you're going to bring that umbrella. Now, if it doesn't rain, are you going to be upset? Well, I, my goodness, I had to carry this umbrella around and it was overcast. It never even ran, ran, rained. And, and, you know, to yourself, nobody would think that that's a bad thing. You brought it just in case. And that's the way that when you have these hedges in place, when you protect yourself, you're doing things that are smart. It doesn't mean you sell your entire portfolio, put it under your mattress. That's not what they're talking about. And that's why I like the fact that real investment advice is always giving sound information. I'm not going to get into all of these. In fact, some of them I have covered. All I'm just showing you is that these are five charts in one that I believe I've covered actually every single one of these. The fact that we are looking at a time in which everything has gone off the charts, the statistics are just ridiculous at this point. They have never been this out of whack ever in history. And they point that out here just to give you an update. They have their own fear and greed index. And right now it is basically at the highest it has ever been. Not that that should surprise anybody. It is actually 97, but it doesn't even matter anymore. It's off the charts. Fund managers survey cash levels are down to 3.9 in January. If you can't see that, it's the gray area in the back. And that has been declining month after month after month after month. And what's happening? Of course, it's going into the stock market. This is the S&P 500, as you can see. Of course, there's more and more money going into the stock market. There is no cash on the sidelines. That is a myth. That is not true when you actually look at it. There's no such thing as cash on the sidelines lines. There's always money in the money markets. There's different reasons why people are doing that. It's not on the sidelines. It's so ridiculous. In fact, Real Investment and Advice had some information about that just recently, did an entire report about that. Top 10 most shorted Russell 3000 stocks basket. Look at that. Look at what's been happening. It's got, it has completely gone into a hockey stick formation straight up. It's a rocket ship right now. Now, does this necessarily mean that it's going to crash tomorrow? No, but we know that there's something going on here because they've been going up at a rate which you cannot justify. You absolutely cannot justify it at this time here looking at a big basket of these particular stocks, and you just see that 
they're just getting bought up because the prices are low. That's not the way you invest. That's not an investor. That's a speculator. That's a gambler. Bank of America here is just showing you that all the different financial companies, after they have been uh, allowed to basically do the buybacks, again, they did so and were at levels we haven't seen since March. This was expected. I'm sure it will actually increase here as the market continues to go up. There'll be more buybacks. As the market comes down, things might change, but that's where we're at right now. I thought this was hilarious. I wanted to bring it to you because we have yet another individual telling us that this is going to be the Roaring Twenties. This is going to be the Roaring Twenties. That's the quote specifically here. Now, Tillman was apparently on CNBC. He said this, the consumer is coming back. I'm telling you where we can do business. We are doing business. This is going to be the Roaring Twenties. You can just see it. Now, what he's citing in here is that there's a lot of stimulus coming, and so people are going to spend their money, and it's going to go into many of these different businesses. Certainly, that will happen, but how much stimulus? Is another $1,400 going to fix the problems, and suddenly everybody's going to be buying things like crazy? No, it's just ridiculous to suggest that. But, you know, apparently we're in the roaring 20s. There's a group, a big group of people right now that are certainly acting like it. I could tell you that. Google, Facebook, and other online advertising giants will see blow quarter four. Analysts predict. I think that is pretty clear that these companies are going to show that their earnings are fantastic. Just wanted to give you some insight on that. All right, I'll end the video there. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, there are many courses out there, $1,000, $2,000. I gave my course away for free in hopes that people would be less hateful towards me and didn't actually do anything at all in that regard. But anyway, if you want to check it out, the amazongps.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, top to bottom A to Z, I've got the two books you need to read. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. Wait a second, don't go anywhere. If you haven't seen this video, you got to watch it. Click it, I'll see you there.